As I'm about to start the journey that is getting ready for drinks and happy hour, you know, lotioning it up, skincare, makeup, you know, just making sure to look and smell my best because it makes me feel my best. I'm also reminded of one thing. The fact that men show up to dates in sweatpants. Sweatpants! <laughs> and... Oh my god, how horrible of a life you must lead. Never before have we ever seen such a tribulation led by such a magnificent specimen of pure womanhood. And now that we've gotten the obligatory sarcasm out of the way, let's get down to brass tacks. Now, if we're taking what you're saying at face value, you're implying that you've gone on multiple dates with multiple men who wear sweatpants to these dates. And if these are the types of men who can get away with this behavior, you're talking about Tyrone, President and CEO of Chad Corp, and he can get away with this because he doesn't see you as worthy of him putting in maximum effort. This situation is win-win for him regardless. He doesn't have to bother to actually wear pants because within the first few minutes, he's going to know if you're going to smash or if he's just going to bail and leave you with a check. Either way, he's going to use pants that are easy to take off. It's a real time saver for this man. He's got things to do, and you barely made his list. I'm not talking about like coming over and chilling, you know, like that's one thing, that's one thing, that's fine. I'm talking, we're going out for drinks at like a nice restaurant um, where you definitely shouldn't be wearing sweatpants and it's not even like nice sweatpants. Like these men are showing up in like sweatpants that have clearly been in a little ball on your floor and you picked them up, probably not even clean and you put them on and went on a date with me. Nice. 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 Oh, you silly little goose. A man is only willing to break out his nice sweatpants for special occasions. Things like birthdays for important people or when you have to make an appearance in court and you lost your suit in a poker game. You know, things like that. He's not going to waste staining those tapered pants if he's looking to get some action. And come on, when you say a nice restaurant, we all know you're referring to a franchise joint with drink specials. He's not going to bother adding onto his laundry pile with good clothes for something like that. He's saving that for women he deems worth the actual effort. Effort. And I'll let you in on a little secret when it comes to men, sister. If you feel the need to shove rings through your septum and air out your dirty laundry on TikTok, you're going to find yourself going out with men who put the bare minimum when it comes to wearing pants. That's just how it works. Not even like the cool ones that are like tapered at the end, like the fashionable sweatpants, like straight up grimy sweatpants to go to dinner. And I'm like over here looking and feeling my absolute best because I put the effort in. Is this the new standard? Sweatpants. I love sweatpants. There's a time and place where sweatpants, believe me, there is. Um, but not on a date. Not on a date where we're getting drinks and where you're possibly, you know, gonna get laid. Okay. Are you okay? Mm, I'm fine. I just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. Well, yeah, this is the new standard. It's the standard with which you set. If you found yourself going out on dates with men who dress like this, it's because you chose them. And they don't need to put in any effort. Because at the end of the date, either way, it's going to be quick and easy for them to get out of those clothes. The men that you ignore, generally speaking, will make themselves presentable for a date, and that does include wearing actual pants. But you don't want those men because of the arbitrary dating standards you originally created. You made it clear that certain men aren't obligated to actually wear clothes on these dates because you're fine with it so long as they're either rich, attractive, or lead a life of pure and utter danger. Modern women are willing to put up with a lot of red flags if it means they think they have a shot at locking down with the chairman of Chad Corp, and that has nothing to do with us. We were too busy wearing pants while all of this was happening. That's funny because it's so true. <laughs> Dear future husband, I decided to cook a new meal tonight. I sure wish you were here. You should probably know I can't really cook. But that's okay because we're learning. I can't wait to try new meals with you. I can't wait to force you to try everything even if it's terrible. I can't wait to dance and laugh with you in the kitchen while we wait for our food to finish. Until then, I'll continue to create the kind of memories we will one day make. I hope you're well. I pray for you often. XOXO, your future wife. Mm. Mm. Scary.
<laughs> Dear future lady I will ignore in the grocery store, though I do appreciate your invitation to sign a legally binding contract that would force me to dine with you until our inevitable divorce, I am afraid I must gracefully decline. And as much as I can appreciate the effort, my desire to contract trichinosis thanks to your undercooked pork has been at a minimum for most of my life, and I prefer to keep it that way. I also don't like the prospect of dancing in the kitchen as I am not a very big fan of fire hazards or carefree movements in a room that contains a large number of sharp cooking implements. And though I am confident you will eventually settle for a man who will convince lie to you and tell you that your cooking is passable, I am rather thankful that it will never be me, as it is a goal of mine to not be force-fed terrible, overcooked chicken by a woman who will grow to resent me because I fearfully dread her own cooking. I can cook my own meals as I pay my own bills. Is that still a flex? I can never be quite sure, but don't bother to let me know because I couldn't care less. Signed, the man who refuses to marry you. Take care now, bye bye then. I'm at this cafe that I really like, and I'm witnessing a first date. Mildred! Hey, Mildred! Mildred, wait up! He came a little bit earlier, so he got himself a coffee. And then she came, and she went inside to get herself her drink. I think this is so unattractive that he didn't even go inside and get her a bottle of water. I think it's just such a... Such a turn off. Nobody cares what you think. Well, what do you know? How's it going, Mildred? Man, it's always a joy to see you humiliate yourself on the internet once again. So, I see you reduced yourself to spying on a complete stranger and forcing your own sensibilities instead of minding your own damn business, huh? Well, I get it, Mildred. Your insufferable attitude and clearly aging face have made you incredibly undesirable to 99% of men who have the bare minimum amount of standards when it comes to women and naturally That'll only make you jealous because you're forced to pay for your own coffee for once in your life because nobody was willing to buy it for you. Mildred, there's no need for this kind of behavior. Coffee dates are traditionally a situation where both parties pay for their own drinks as to relieve any awkward moments as the date is already awkward enough. I know this may seem strange to you, Mildred, but most people don't conform to your standards because they're kind of bonkers and all they've done is sabotage you to a life of permanent solitude. So maybe next time, skip the commentary, Mildred. It's none of your business. Anyway. Oh, you're right. And when you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right. This is a series called Why a Man Can't Handle an Independent Woman. Let's go. Should be interesting. So in this video, we're going to talk about why independence is actually a good thing. Because with this whole like gender kind of like role thing that is happening on the internet and like feminine energy and masculine energy i feel like we're kind of like really losing the reason why you know independence is actually good as a woman and we all should have some sort of independence number one it builds your confidence okay a woman that can only depend on her parents, on somebody else, does not have the confidence that a woman who knows that she can stand on her two feet have. Point blank period. And this makes your aura look so attractive. There is nothing more attractive than a woman who's confident, who's secure, who's safe in what she says, in how she talks, in how she, you know, present herself. Ooh. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. Okay, but I'm not sure how you can derive confidence from doing the bare minimum it takes to be a functioning adult in today's society. It's not like it matters. You may own your own car and pay your own bills and brag about being a boss bay ass queen, but there's a problem. You think that this is what men want because this is what you want in a man. And this may come as a shock to you, but men find this attitude incredibly unattractive. When you say that a woman is confident, what you're really saying is that she's argumentative, challenging, and unpleasant to be around. Around. Men desire friendly, peaceful, and attractive women who will trust them to lead and add some value onto his life, which are qualities you refuse to provide. This is why you think bragging about the aforementioned bare minimums are desirable traits because it's all you have in your repertoire. And that's kind of sad because men are not that complicated. You just assume we are, which is both hilarious and kind of sad at the same time. 
Number two, men find this so attractive. The fact that a woman can stand on her two feet, but can also, you know, become soft enough to rely on somebody else. And I just think that as a man, you appreciate that more because you know that this girl is not gonna be necessarily a burden on your shoulders. And now I'm not saying that, you know, there's a lot of men who are completely cool with having that type of burden on their shoulders, but I'm just saying, you know, like it's a really good and attractive thing in front of a man. What has that got to do with it? Hey lady, you're confusing confidence with insipid entitlement. Thanks to your attitude and complete lack of common sense, you will always be considered a burden on a man. Even on the first date, you will expect this man to pay the bill, even though you're capable of doing it yourself. And as the relationship progresses, you're going to be expecting more and more while providing next to nothing. Because in your eyes, it's the man's responsibility to take care of you, even though you claim to be perfectly capable of taking care of yourself. Yourself. And what's hilarious to me is that you will also expect the man to take care of himself because that's what a man does. So you're constantly using his resources and providing him nothing but stress and grief in return. That doesn't make you a confident woman. That makes you a parasite. And the only parasite I want to be involved with is playing Parasite Eve in peace because Aya Bria is way more badass than you could ever be. Plus, she can get herself a fully automatic submachine shotgun, which is just just freaking awesome. With that being said, you have to understand that a lot of the times men are also insecure and that's why they can't handle a woman who's independent. Because this, this will fuck up every single day with their masculinity okay a man who's not safe who's not secure in himself and what he brings to the table financially he's not stable and all of this other stuff you know will feel like he's in a competition with his woman <laughs> Does anybody else find it interesting how this broad points out that the two things a man must bring to the table in order to be secure is that he must be secure financially and with all of the other stuff. So by her own logic, if a man isn't rich, he's insecure because a secure man just freely gives women money, which just proves my point that you're not confident, but rather entitled. You expect a man to just submit to you, pay for your lifestyle, and provide nothing in return. And an insecure man will put up with that no problem, but a secure man won't. He will provide and protect you, but you're gonna have to take care of him as well. If you try to lead the relationship, he won't allow that because both of us know that you're not capable of leading. You think leadership involves treating a man like dirt, and that's not the same thing. Leadership is about trust and respect, and that's not possible in a relationship if you don't trust your man or respect yourself. But don't worry, because this doesn't happen to, you know, it only happens to waste men, basically. It doesn't happen to, like, high-value men. High-value men, men who are confident and safe, are totally okay with having a woman who can stand on her two feet. Trust. But now, what I recommend to do is to go and watch part two of this series because we're going to talk about the source of your independence. Because to be independent is totally cool, but to be too independent is what actually fucks up a lot of relationships these days. No. Well, you're half right. Self-respecting men don't tolerate your kind of behavior, but it's not because of your confidence. Self-respecting men don't have time to deal with your inappropriate garbage, your spoiled attitude, or your parasitic tendencies. And you need to understand something. You are a walking, talking contradiction. You're saying that men want confident women who stand on their own two feet, but can still completely allow a man to take care of them in every way, shape, and form. Which one is it? You can't have it both ways, woman. Self-respecting men find this kind of thinking to be incredibly annoying and extremely pointless. Why should a man waste his time with you when all you're gonna do is charge him for your lack of services? What's he getting in return for this? It sounds to me in your own nonsense rambling that a man is better off flushing that money down the toilet because at least the water swirling around is gonna be more visually stimulating than anything you could ever possibly hope to provide.
And that is going to do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of comedy is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button, ring the notification bell, leave a couple of comments, share this video around. Let's give the good old-fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Stay classy and keep those heads held high, gentlemen and gents. And until next time, peace out, homies.